Hello everybody, today's video is gonna show you the difference between real Goodyear welted, real Blake stitch shoes, and fake or false stitched shoes where the stitch is just cosmetic. I've also thrown in here a couple examples that I found thrifting of some uh, new old stock shoes, um, as well as what happens to some artificial materials and cheap leather, um, you know, when it uh, breaks down over time, okay? So let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is, though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. Here it goes. Here they are completely finished up. Now, by the way, in this video today, I've got two examples of Johnson & Murphy shoes that have fake stitching on them. Um, I've got an example of a floor shine shoe that has fake stitching in it, and also a Cole Haan. Now, this video is not intended to disparage any company because what I'm showing you is factual, okay? So in other words, if I'm showing you a shoe, you know, that has stitching on it that's not functional, in my books, I would call that a fake stitch, okay? Even though some people have, you know, kind of uh, argued and said it's a real stitch, it just doesn't hold anything on. Okay, thank you. So when I say I'm a fake stitch, I'm saying a stitch that is just purely cosmetic and is not actually functioning and holding the shoe together. Uh, but as I said, I'm not trying to disparage, like, for example, Johnston and Murphy, because they've made some great shoes in the past and, you know, still make some okay shoes. Uh, but what uh, uh, the reason I'm showing you these brands is this is just what I've run across, you know, through my, uh, you know, shoe escapades here. This is just what I happen to come across. So I'm not picking on any particular brand. Now, the more shoes a company sells, the more of them you're going to see in circulation, and the more of those you're going to see as failures as well. Does that make sense? So um, I'm going to show you some different examples of things, um, and then also I'm going to uh, uh, teach you how to determine if the shoe is really genuinely Blake stitched or genuinely Goodyear welted. Okay, so first of all, what is a Blake stitched shoe and what is a Goodyear welted shoe? I have a complete another video on this that I'm going to link below in the description. Uh, so I'm just going to give you the very short version of it. Blake stitch construction shoe is where the sole of the shoe is basically sewn through the sole. And this one is worn out and you can see it goes, do you see those stitches? The outsole stitches go directly into the shoe and that is called a Blake stitch, okay? So one stitch holds the sole directly onto the shoe. And if you look inside the shoe, um, sometimes you'll have to peel back the lining. Then you can see those stitches right there are those stitches coming through to the interior of the shoe. That's Blake stitch construction. And But you can see there's really no room for any padding in here, okay? Full details in the other video. If you look at a Goodyear welted shoe, uh, here's an example of a shoe cut apart, Goodyear welted shoe. And in the cross section here, what I'm gonna show you is you see the outsole, and you can see it's stitched to what's called a welt. This piece of leather right here is the welt. I'll show you it on the other shoe. This piece of leather is the welt. The welt is sewn to this cloth piece. This cloth piece is called a gemming. Uh, the gemming is glued to the bottom of the insole. I don't know if you can see it any more clearly. No, not really. The gemming is glued to the bottom, okay, of the insole, right? So it's also stitched through the upper and the gemming. Welt is stitched to the gemming and the upper. If I go back to the cutaway, you can see here. The welt is stitched, okay, to the gemming end of the upper. It all comes together right there. Then between the insole and the outsole, there's a layer of conforming cork. This is Goodyear welt construction regarded as the best, most durable method of shoe construction. Okay, so now that we've got that straight, let's get to the meat potatoes here. Okay, now this is kind of interesting because it's failing. You can see the construction really good. So do you see? Okay, there's the upper, shoe upper, wraps around under there. There's the shoe upper. This is a welt, but it's just really decorative. It really does nothing. Do you see that? Okay, so when you look at the side of the shoe, especially when it's new, you think that's how thick the leather is, but really, it's all the, that's really all the thickness of leather that you're actually getting. Okay, it's not very thick at all, right? It is uh, very quite, really quite thin. So the stitches go to the interior of the shoe. This shoe, can't really tell you how many times it's been worn, but just wanted to show you one of the disadvantages of a Blake stitched sole. 
um, didn't get that much wear out of them because, you know, a lot of the newer shoes, you know, they're saving materials and, you know, things like that and trying to cut corners where they can. So now to repair the shoe you know, is either a half sole or full resole done on these, but that'd have to be done by a cobbler that can do Blake stitching. So, and then it's probably going to cost, I don't know, um, half soles, I think, in this area, or Midwest, United States, are probably around 60, 70 bucks. Full resoles, probably closer to 90, 80 to 100 bucks, you know, which is probably close to what the shoe cost when you got it. So, anyway, um, uh, so probably going to more than likely uh, toss the shoe pretty soon. So, you're going to spend 100 to 150 bucks for something that, you know, you're going to throw away, or you're willing to spend a few hundred bucks. You know, I mean, you can get Allen Edmonds for, you know, Goodyear welted shoe for 250 on sale, you know, um, and spend a little more and get something better. So just wanted to show you that. 15-1771. You can see it says, I don't know if you can see there, it says made in India. And if you look at the shoe, and you see stitching. Okay. And... At first glance, it looks like it's Blake stitched, but first clue, the distance from there to there is way more than the distance from the stitching from there to there. Now, take the sole off, and what do you notice? Do you see the stitches? It doesn't go into the shoe, nor does it go into the weld. You see the stitches there? So it's got a weld. It's not stitched to anything. Stole with sole with stitching that's not stitched to anything. So this is just a bonded glued sole. Interesting, huh? You see the heel? Top lift is replaceable, but I've seen this on all the Johnston Murphys I've ever torn apart. It's like a it looks like particle board. I'm not sure if it's ground up leather or, or wood or paper, what it is, but it looks like particle board. Kind of acts like it as well. Here's a pair of Johnston and Murphy's. This is the 1850 line. Johnston and Murphy's production has all gone overseas and the quality has gone down. You can see it appears to be Goodyear welted. You can see stitching on the top and on the bottom. Uh, see, once again, there you see the 1850 line uh, logo. Um, when you look at the bottom, though, look how far inboard the stitching is. So then you think, well, maybe it's Blake stitched and just the stitch on the welt is fake. Sorry about dropping the shoe. You open it up, though, because it was already coming apart. Those stitches there on the outside of the shoe do not connect to anything. Look at that. So they just stitch through the sole and then glue it on. The stitching is completely cosmetic. You see that? So buyer beware. You've got, uh, you know, just another example here of companies cutting costs and, uh, you know, um, being misleading in my opinion. So again, buyer beware. Here's another pair of shoes, Bostonians. They appear to be stitched all the way around. No stitching on the top. Appears to be Blake stitched. Look down in. And you can see the stitches coming through. So it is Blake stitched. Here's a pair of floor shimes. It's getting harder and harder today to sometimes tell if a shoe is a good quality or not. A pair of Allen Edmonds. Floor shimes. Clearly not Goodyear welted. No stitching on the top. Looks like stitching around the bottom of the sole, though, right? Allen Edmonds. Clearly not Goodyear welted. No stitching on the top. Stitching around the bottom. So are they both Blake stitched? If you don't know what that means, see my other videos. You look inside the shoe, okay, you see no stitching. In other words, you do not see that stitching coming through the interior of the shoe. Here as well, you do not see the stitching coming through, but here's a trick. If we look at this pair, and you pull back the insole. When you pull back the insole, clearly no stitching. Pull back the insole on this one. Can you see the stitching? In other words, those stitches go through to the interior of the shoe. It's got a pour on, insole laid over it. These are Blake stitched. This is a fake cosmetic stitch. All right, buyer beware. 
Here's a pair of Cole Haan Grands. Uh, nice looking hole cuts. When you look at the sole, at first it looks like a hidden channel stitch where they would fold the leather back, stitch the shoe, and then fold the leather back over the stitch. But um, I didn't actually, you know, go and take the insole out. But on this one, here's another example of a fake stitch where the stitch is just purely decorative. So be careful. I've seen this as well on what you call the Grand 360. They were peeling the shoe back a little bit. You can see that welt, um, you know, is really just decorative. Can you see how it's undercut? So it's another example where the uh, stitching is just purely cosmetic and is not functional. Buyer beware. Here's an interesting find I found at a thrift store. Now, I've done another video on a uh, vintage Sears shoe made in the 80s, but uh, you see here, Sears Classics leather upper, uh, man-made materials, uh, balanced man-made materials made in China. Generally speaking, wow, look at the leather condition. It's astounding that leather can be this bad, but they're completely unworn. Generally, you're gonna see uh, leathers tanned, in my opinion, in China and India are gonna be the worst quality, but man, these things never had a shot, but it's such a shame. Like I said, these things are completely unworn and, you know, just completely destroyed. Um, just thought that was interesting. And at first I saw this, I thought, ooh, Shell Quarterman maybe? At first glance. Then I saw those fine wrinkles there. Nope, not Shell Quarterman. And the more I looked at it, I thought, wow, the, it must be just corrected green leather. It's very smooth. It's got that smoothness of Shell Quarterman, but... You see, the leather has like no depth of color. Very artificial looking. Yeah, here's the point. You see that? It's hard to say exactly. DuPont Corfian, it's a something synthetic. You can't see the first word, synthetic upper. No, it doesn't say so. Yeah, I think it says synthetic. Something synthetic upper. This is not leather. It's amazing it's in this good shape. I've seen pictures of this stuff, and it just absolutely splits and cracks apart. Avoid it like the plague. They are good, you're welcome. Guys, look at this. Look what I found. So now that you've got all this information and you might be a little bit apprehensive, you might think, oh shoot, you know, how do I figure out whether a shoe is really good or welted or not now that I've gotten some of the differences and I can see how to check? Well, here's what I would do. If you saw that Florsheim versus Allen Edmonds, that's a very good way to be able to check, okay? Now here's another tip I'm gonna show you. Uh, one other tip is you're gonna count the number of threads. Now let me show you exactly what I mean. This is a Florsheim Castellano Wing Ox. This shoe retails for $130, I bought it for 109, okay? So it looks like you see a welt with stitching on it. And then if you look on the bottom side, you see stitching, so you say, ah, good, you're welted. Well, um, let's measure 
so what I do, I did is I have this pair of needle nose pliers just set to one inch, and this is difficult to do on camera. But if I measure one inch worth of laces there, I counted five stitches per inch. Now, if I flip the shoe over and look at the stitching on the underside and I measure, I only get four stitches per inch. So each one of these loops, if it's real stitching, must connect with one of these loops on the, up, on the top side. You cannot have five stitches per inch on the top and four on the bottom. Does that make sense? It just, the math, it just doesn't work. There has to be an equal number of stitches on the top and bottom side. So let me compare this to a, you know, shoe that I know is Goodyear welted. This Johnson & Murphy is Goodyear welted. So if I go to the top side, I'm going to measure here on the outsole and I measure one inch, inch worth. And then I go to the bottom side. If I were to count those number of stitches, okay, there, okay, and on the top side, I'm not going to do it on camera, but just trust me. You know, if you measure that, you'll see it does match. Now, this particular shoe, it obviously needs to be resold. So I actually stuck a knife in here, okay? And I started to tear the shoe apart a little bit. But when you peel this open, can you see the threads in there, right? So the stitching, okay, it goes through the outsole through the welting. So that's why there's the same number of stitches on the top side as there is on the bottom. Now, tip number two. Do you see how far inboard, if I measure how far in, okay, the laces are from the outsole, the, I should say the edge of the sole, and then if you go to the top side, y y there can be a little bit of difference, but when the difference is that drastic, you know, the stitching just doesn't line up between the top and the bottom. In other words, when you see this kind of spacing uh, between the edge of the sole and the stitches, that's how far in a Blake stitched shoe would be. Remember this Blake stitched shoe? You see how far inboard they are? Because those stitches have to go to the interior of the shoe. So in other words, the spacing is another giveaway that this is a fake stitch, okay? So that's tip number two. So tip number three, I'm gonna take the actual shoe that I'm considering purchasing. This only works um, if the shoe is in production. And you see the model number there? It says 14137. And then I go to Florsheim's website. In this case, it is uh, florsheim.com. And I go right over here to the search bar. This is the fast way. In the search bar, 14137, enter. And it comes up with the exact shoe right here, right? Uh, Castellano, wing ox, uh, wingtip Oxford. Okay, maybe the, the, I remembered it wrong, or maybe they changed the name. Anyway, so if you look at the features here, genuine leather upper. This is interesting because it used to say a year ago, it used to say full grain leather upper. That's interesting. Leather linings, uh, fully cushioned footbed, durable non-leather sole, the most versatile men's shoe, business casual. So in other words, what don't you see here anywhere? You don't see it saying uh, Blake stitched or Goodyear welted construction. So my main tip here is you're never gonna see a true Goodyear welted shoe that it doesn't say that it's Goodyear welted. In other words, that's a substantial feature that has substantial more work, materials, labor, and skill. Companies never gonna have a Goodyear welted shoe and not put that feature on their website. So I can with 99% surety tell you if the shoe does not say Goodyear welted on the website, it's not Goodyear welted. The website does not say Blake stitched, it's not Blake stitched. Okay, so I hope that helped you guys. Um, I hope that brought you some value. So now this gives you a little more information and arms you so that you can make better uh, informed decisions. Um, you know, this world that we're in is changing. It's getting a little cloudier. And um, I don't know, sometimes I feel like that marketing, there's a, bit, a little bit less integrity than there used to be in marketing. So we need to you'd be more informed, but the great news is it's easier to be more informed these days than in years past, okay? Um, so now you can help yourself figure out what's the difference, why some shoes are $50, $150, and $350. And at a first glance, they may all look the same, right? So I hope that brought you some value. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. Check out my channel. I've got a lot of other stuff shoe-related mostly, delved into some suits and things like that as well. Hit that notification bell if you want to know when new videos come out. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, have a great day, and God bless you guys. Take care.